Hello and welcome. In this lecture video we're going to look at non-uniform 2D motion uh, using calculus as a tool to look at situations where we don't have constant acceleration. If we do have constant acceleration we get to use the kinematic equations and let's actually start there uh, so we can see kind of how this works. Let's say we've got an object uh, launched at a velocity of 5 meters per second uh, at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. Uh, and obviously this is projectile motion. So, oh, let's also say that it's launched at 10 meters off of a building, uh, 10 meters high. So we know that we have two sets of equations that we can use given by the kinematics. The horizontal position at any time t can be given by this equation right here. And the vertical position at any time t can be given by this kinematic equation here. Okay, so um, yeah, that's super clear. Let's plug in some numbers and then we're going to do some calculus and see what we come up with. So x of t, uh, plugging in numbers, our x initial is 0 and our v in the x direction is 5 times the sine of 30. So we're looking at 2.5t. Uh, and our y position at any time t, our y initial is 10 meters. And our initial velocity in the y direction is going to be 5 times the oh, sine of 30. I messed that up. So that's going to be 2.5 t minus 4.9 g, oops, 4.9 t squared. Uh, let's fix this one over here. That's not 2.5. That is cosine. So we're looking at 5 cos of 30, and that's times t. So now we know from past experience that if we want to find the velocity uh, function, we have to take the derivative of the position function. So let's start with this x1. So we take the derivative of x with respect to t, and that gives us our velocity in the x direction at any time t. And we see here it's 5 times cosine of 30. Oh, wait a minute. That's just the horizontal component of the velocity the whole time. It shows us that the velocity is constant. Take the derivative again, dv dt gives us the acceleration in the x direction at any time t. But 5 cos 30 is a constant. Derivative of a constant is 0. So over here on the y side, let's take the derivative of y with respect to t, which will give us the y component of the velocity at any time t. Derivative of 10 is 0. Derivative of 2.5t is 2.5 uh, minus the derivative of 4.9t squared is 9.8 t. Notice what we have here is another kinematic equation. v final is equal to v naught minus a t. Uh, take the derivative again, dv dt gives us the acceleration in the y direction at any time t. Derivative of 2.5 is 0 and the derivative of negative 9.8 t is negative 9.8. Now what we see here is we have a set of three equations that can give us the horizontal and vertical position at any time t, the horizontal and vertical velocity at any time t, the horizontal and vertical acceleration at any time t. Let me just go ahead and blow your mind for a second and go ahead and just throw an i hat right here and throw a j hat right here and combining them with a plus sign we have an equation that can give us the position of the particle, at least the x and y component of the position of the particle, at any time t. Uh, again, doing that for the velocities, i hat, j hat, we can have the entire velocity, v at any time t, is equal to those two added together. Same thing down here for the acceleration at any time t, i hat, j hat. So let's see how this is going to work for non-uniform acceleration. So here we go. We've got a velocity function, uh, and I've put it in vector notation. We have one uh, function that will give us the x component of the velocity at any time t. We have another that will give us the y component of the velocity at any time t. Uh, and we have over here an initial condition that we're going to use to find our position function. So first off, let's do the easy one. Let's find the acceleration vector. So we've got uh, the acceleration. Well, let's do that again here. 
let's take the derivative of the velocity with respect to time is going to give us the acceleration at any time t. So first, take the derivative of the i component. See, the derivative of 3t cubed is 9t squared. The derivative of negative 4 is 0. So there we have our y component, sorry, our x component of the acceleration. How about the y component? Take the derivative over here. We've got the derivative of t squared is 2t. Derivative of negative 4t is negative 4. So take the derivative of each one individually. Once you're done, go ahead, slap on an i, slap on a j, and you've just done some vector calculus. Not difficult. All right? Uh, let's say we want to know what is the acceleration at 2 seconds. Go ahead and plug it in. Uh, 2 squared is 4. 9 times 4 is 36 i hat. And 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0 plus 0 j hat. So we can see that we have an acceleration at 2 seconds of 36 meters per second squared in the positive i direction. You can answer all sorts of questions like this. Uh, is there ever a time where the acceleration is 0? When is the x component of the acceleration 0? We already see where the y component of the acceleration is 0. Um, so very powerful just using now our new acceleration at any time t equation. Let's do the integral to find the position at any time t. Okay, so now here we are back at our velocity function, and we want to get the position function. And we do abbreviate, generally tend to abbreviate position in two dimensions with an r vector. So that's what's going on over on the right-hand side there. So we're going to integrate. The integral of the velocity is equal to the position at any time t. And so we are going to integrate now both sides. So we're going to have the integral of 3t cubed minus 4. And that's going to be with respect to the time. And we're also going to have over here the integral of t squared minus 4t. That's going to be with respect to time as well. So take them individually. Don't worry about the i's and j's right now. We'll slap them on at the end. So the integral of 3t cubed is going to be 3 fourths t to the fourth minus 4t. And we have to add on our nice little c. Since this is the x, let's say c sub x. Over here for our second integral, the integral of t squared is 1 third t cubed minus, let's see, 4 halves is going to give us a 2 t squared plus c sub y. Uh, before we throw on the i's and j's, let's take care of these constants of integration. And that's where this comes in right here. Uh, our position vector at time 0 gives us 0 i and 0 j. So we're going to plug in 0 for our x component, and we're going to plug in 0 for each time. 0 plus 0 equals c sub x. It's pretty clear to see that our constant of integration for x is 0. The same for our constant of integration for y, because we're going to plug in zeros for those t's and get 0. So to rewrite our position vector at any time t is equal to 3 fourths t to the fourth minus 4t. Now we can throw on the i. Add on the other component. 1 third t cubed minus 2 t squared. Throw on the j component. You have just done vector calculus. Not difficult. Just treat the i and j as separate functions. Integrate both of them separately when you're all done. Finding out what the constants of integration are with your initial conditions. Just slap on the i and the j. And once again, we want to know, hey, what's the position at 2 seconds? Plug in 2 for your t's. That'll give you your i component. That'll give you your j component. Once you've got i and j, you can go, oh, it goes that many in i. It goes that many in j. Find the resultant magnitude and direction. Magnitude with pythag, direction with inverse tangent. All right? Piece of cake. You've got this. Just treat the i's and j's separately. It's almost like two different calculus problems. And then at the end, slap on the i and the j. 
Also notice now in two steps we have our position at any time t function. We already had the velocity at any time t function and we previously found the acceleration at any time t function. We've got the positions, the, sorry, the equations of motion for this object moving in two dimensions with non-constant acceleration and we can find out all sorts of fun information about it from here. One last thing. Uh, I gave you functions previously for the velocity. Let's say I give you a couple of graphs. We've got one graph that'll give us the x component of the velocity. We have one graph that'll give us the y component of the velocity. And you think, I don't know what to do. This isn't an equation. I don't know how to take the derivative. I don't know how to take the integral. Well, this is a line right here, and you know how to find the equation of a line. y equals mx plus b. So we have v sub x at any time t is equal to the slope of our line. Let's see, a rise of 40 and a run of 5. We're looking at a slope of 8 t, y-intercept of 0. There's your velocity function for x, and your velocity function for y is even more straightforward. Hey, it's constant at 30. No t involved at all. So hey, look, you do have your velocity function. Combine them. Velocity at any time t is equal to 8t, that's your i component, plus 30j. There's your y component. How do you find the acceleration? Oh, now we know what to do because we have an equation. Take the derivative. Derivative of 8t is 8. Throw the i on. Derivative of 30 is 0. Throw the j on. How do we get the position function? Integrate. So the integral of 8t is going to be 8 over 2, which is 4t squared. Let's go ahead and say plus some constant of integration. That's our i hat. Integral of 30 is 30t. Let's go ahead and throw on a constant of integration. And that didn't work out so well. Do that again. J. And boom, provided that I've given you some initial conditions, which, I don't know, let's say initial conditions are r at time 0 is equal to 0i plus 0j, in which case, what we saw last time, both constants of integration are 0, think, think, and you've got your position function. All right, so the calculus is a very valuable tool that allows us to, given one equation of motion, find the other two. Then the fun begins. We get to use those to describe the motion in both the x direction and the y direction. All right, that's it for this time. See you next time.